Hi everyone, this is Carl with Gardening Solutions. If you've seen my previous videos, you know of the weed problems that I have in my food forest. Weeds have taken over my planting areas and are so deep that there's even hoses and connections and electrical outlets that I can't even reach without fighting a bunch of vines and grass. I've tried using a string trimmer to keep this under control, but it has not worked out very well as you can see. I'm constantly having to unclog the head when things get spun around it and there's the potential for damage on trees and structures when using a stream trimmer, plus the hassle of having to replace the line. I've read a few reviews and have seen some demonstrations of rotary scissors, so that's what this video is about. Rotary scissors don't use string and it's not just a spinning blade. It's actually a rotating blade cutting against a fixed secondary edge, just like when you use scissors. Let's take a look at the installation process first. So this is the tool I'm going to modify. I've got a electric echo. This is a power head. It's called the PASS Professional Attachment System. So it's going to consist of a power head and then you've got different attachments you can add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this weed eater head off and replace it with the rotary scissors. Here's the rotary scissors. I haven't opened the box yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Take a look and see what we got. Instructions. So mounting kit. Looks like it's got some different sleeves here to help it snug in. And I'm not quite sure what those are yet. And then here's the unit itself. Looks like it's got a uh, protective plastic cover around it. So let's take a look at that. Yep, it's got a little safety tab there and there we go so I guess uh, one of these spins but we'll find that out once I get it connected so you can see it's got like a uh, two blades one that's gonna spin and then one that stays fixed so when you're cutting it's it's kind of like using scissors so let's go ahead I'm gonna remove the head off of this and then I will take a look at the instructions real quick see what's required and get this connected on. Okay, when installing this, I breeze through part of the instructions real quick. Uh, one thing you have to know is the diameter of the tube and they say to measure it, but I mean, you're talking uh, 24, 25, 25.4, 26. That'd be hard to measure accurately. Uh, so I Googled it. The echo is gonna be the 25.4 millimeters. So I've got that. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this. This is using the um, Torx T25 screws here. So you're, you're seeing this live as I go. So if, if I do anything wrong, you're, you'll be sure to see that too. So let's back these out and see what happens. I don't know that I need... This one probably is a lock screw, I'm guessing. So maybe I have to take this one most of the way out. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so that that middle one there is a lock screw, goes in that hole, and then the other two were just cinching it onto this tube. So easy enough. Just loosen those three up and this comes off. Oh, okay, now we can see the shaft here and it's very greasy. And it's a square shaft. And I see they have the different pieces here. So one of them's a square, so I'm guessing that's what I'm gonna be using. But I'm gonna take a second here, clean my hand, read the instructions a little further, and then see what the next step is. Okay, here's where we're at. I uh, cleaned, attempted to clean my hand a little bit. This is the same tube, it doesn't look like it, but I just took a, a rag and some water and wiped it down. Um, by the way, uh, one hint, uh, if you don't want to sacrifice a tool for example, with Echo, go to the Echo dealer locally if you're on good terms with them. And a lot of times their repair department will have spare tubes and they might even just give you one. Uh, I did go to my dealer. Unfortunately, they just threw everything away. So you didn't have one. Okay, um, so I read the directions. And this is the collar for 25.4 millimeter shaft, which is what Echo appears to be. It's got a little tab in the bottom, so that's just gonna line up with this groove. So it just slides right in 
And then there's a, a drive shaft adapter, basically. So for Echo, it was the square one. And just use some needle nose to set that in there. Make it look easy, but it takes a little bit of doing. There we go. Okay, so this hole is going to get locked by that screw. And the shaft looks pretty centered. So, you're going to take a four millimeter Allen wrench and just make sure we've got it in the right position first. So that went in with no effort, which is good. So yeah, so the shaft, I'm wiggling it, moving it, and it's not moving, so that's good. So now I can tighten this other one, which is gonna cinch down onto the tube. Not too tight, I have a habit of over tightening. It's actually, um, it's pretty loose. I'm not convinced. And it's, it's uh, clamped shut here. So I'm not convinced that that adapter is the way it should be. I think it should be more snug. So I'm reading the instructions, it doesn't say anything about that. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thicker one in. Cause I'm just, uh, I don't know, you know what? Yeah, it wobbles around, I don't like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it back apart. I'm gonna use the thicker one, the thicker shim. I don't feel comfortable with that one. So I guess the result of that is it might be a little trial and error. So this, what's interesting is they're labeled, this 24 is really thick and the 24 and a half, which you think would be half millimeter difference, which I guess it is. Yeah. And this one feels like it's in between, but it's actually 25, so that's that's odd that the 25 is thicker. Doesn't make sense. So let me try this thick one here. Let's see what happens. You know what, that might be too thick. Let me try this medium one. So this one's labeled 25. Let's see how that does. That one feels good. Okay, so with the Echo, I'm using the 25, not the 25.4. And it definitely feels better. So I've got the lock screw. I'm gonna cinch down here. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so again, uh, with the Echo, I used the 25, and I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to uh, get the battery back, hook this up, and take it outside and give it a try. If I have the uh, rotary scissors flat, and I go to hook up my Echo tool, where the uh, set hole is there, right, or the, uh, the lock, Okay, so with that properly in place, my tool is sideways. So that's not good. So in looking at this, all right, if I hold the uh, Echo power head, compare it to this, the hole should be 180 degrees out. Um, and actually it's not, it's, uh, it's 90 degrees. So you can see the hole in the top there. So, um, I'm going to drill another hole in here. So if you're using an echo tool, you may have to do that. You may have to drill a hole in the side. So you could do it on either end, but I think I want to leave the strength down by the, the head there. So I'm going to take care of that. I have to be real careful not to get shavings in there and such. But as soon as I'm done with that, we'll come back and uh, give it a try. Okay, I drilled a secondary hole in here. So now I've got the original hole here up top, and then I added a quarter inch hole about 90 degrees out. Not perfect, doesn't really need to be. So the good news is this is really easy to drill. I guess it's aluminum, so no problem there.
I drilled the wrong side. I've drilled another hole. So now, I mean, I could have just done a fourth and this would be completely universal. Now I have a hole in the right side. And let's just make sure the tool likes it. Just gotta find it there. Hopefully, there it is. Okay, let's tighten this up. My holy hole. Pop a battery in. And let's see. Look at that. I think we're in business. All right, let's head out to the yard and test it out. Here's the rotary scissors in action. You can see they're quite effective for tall grass and weeds. It's cutting them very close to the ground. I still have to move the cut pieces out of the way, but it's a lot easier than a string trimmer. Getting used to it doesn't take very long, but you do have to be very careful around small plants as it will cut them without any hesitation. It's safe around larger items like pipes and trees. It's actually better than the string trimmer as it doesn't cause any damage. I also used it against the house and rotated it to use it like an edger. It works for this, but it's a little bit awkward. So what do I think? Uh, oh, it's hot. That's one thing. Um, I really like it. I spent about an hour with it today cutting uh, various areas. Uh, you have to be real careful around some of your smaller, more delicate stuff because it'll take them down without hesitation. Um, it works really well. I'm not sure how long the blades will stay sharp. They do have uh, information on how to sharpen them within the instructions, and I'm sure you can get replacement blades and such. Um, I really like it. I'm going to go ahead and do a whole bunch of clearing, uh, mainly around the utilities, the um, hoses and such first, and see how that goes. I'll follow up in about a month, just see how it goes. Uh, but as of right now, if you have a really thick area you need to clear, these work great. It's also good for cutting up next to your trees, next to your house. Uh, it doesn't do any damage. You can do edging with it. It's, I wouldn't call it the best tool for that. I would still use a standard stick edger if you have that. But if you're only gonna have one tool, it can definitely uh, fill the bill for all those. So that's it for now. Uh, there's gonna be a link in the description to the product at Amazon. So again, this is the um, iDeck Power Rotary Scissors. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I think there's a couple other manufacturers. Steel actually makes one that's pre-assembled on a shaft, but you have to have steel uh, power tools to use that one. So this one's more universal. So that's it for now. Hope this was helpful.